What's going on everyone? I'm going to show you real quick how to create, connect, and code a Discord bot just to get it to send a simple ping command. Uh, this is something that's pretty cool to know how to do and it's not that hard to figure out. I just wanted to um, expand the knowledge that I'm sharing a little bit and I'm going to go over this and how to do it and it should be pretty simple. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install Python 3.10 and PyCharm Community Edition. Uh, I'll provide links in the description for everything that you will need in this video to get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to python.org slash downloads and then you're going to want to download Python 3.10.2. It's the latest version. Once you click this button here, it's going to start downloading it. You'll see it in the bottom left of your screen. It's going to be a .exe file. Once that's completed, you're going to want to, uh, going to, want to go ahead and launch it and begin the installation process. Now. When you do start installing PyCharm, um, you'll want to get the Community Edition. And again, I will leave this in the description below. So you'll want to get both of these things first. And again, for PyCharm, you'll want to select Community Edition. And once you start the setup for PyCharm, you'll want to make sure that you have the Community Edition desktop shortcut, update the path variable, update context menu, and create associations. Um, I left all those selected when I um, downloaded PyCharm, so this is the settings I would recommend. Once you get all of that installed, um, you are going to want to open PyCharm and configure it. Now, this is what it looks like when you first open PyCharm. You're going to want to come up here. This should be blank. You won't have any uh, recent projects or anything unless you've already used PyCharm, but you want to go to New Project, which creates you a new project. This is what it looks like here, and this is what's going to be your setup. Okay, so you're going to put the location from where you want your folder to be created for this project. You're going to create a new environment using virtual env. The location um, is going to be where it's going to be saved as far as where it's going to run from. I usually keep mine in the, in the Python project folder that's inside of where you originally installed your Python. Um, and then you're going to want to put your base interpreter as your exe file that you just downloaded a minute ago. So wherever you saved your, your python.exe file to at the beginning of this video, you're going to want to set your base interpreter to wherever you saved that exe file. And then make sure that matches up. And then select inherit global site packages. And then you don't have to do this, but if you want to create a main.py welcome script, you can. If not, uh, you'll have to make an extra step, but uh, your choice. Let's go ahead and leave it selected for this example. So once you got all that set, um, again, you're going to want to select the virtual environment, which a virtual environment is a Python environment such that the Python interpreter, libraries, and scripts installed into it are isolated from those installed in other virtual environments. This is how you separate programs from one another because some programs require different modules than others. And... That's why we like to keep them in virtual environments. Now, once you get all this set up, you hit create. And then this is what it looks like. You have your first snippet of code on the screen. This is that welcome, uh, welcome message that we selected earlier. You can erase all this, and I would recommend erasing all this, but this is just to get you started. So now we're ready to create our Discord bot and invite it to our Discord. So to reiterate what we've done so far, we've, we've downloaded Python. We've installed Python. We have downloaded PyCharm, we have installed PyCharm, and we have set up our Python interpreter to match the location of where we downloaded our exe file to, and then we created our virtual environment, and now we are looking at our main.py file, the only file in this project that we just erased the text from to get started. So now that we've got all this ready to go, we're going to create our Discord bot and invite it to Discord. So again, I will provide this link to uh, the description below. What you're going to want to do is go to the Developer Center and log in to your Discord. Once you do that, you're going to want to go ahead and hit New Application. This will create a new application for your bot. Now, you can name it whatever you want. In this example, I put Practice Bot and it hit Create once you do that. Now you're going to want to Name your application and give it a description. Description is optional. Again, I named mine practice bot. Once you've uh, got it all named and everything, then you're going to want to click the bot tab on the left hand side of your screen. We were in the general information tab. Now you're going to be in the bot tab. And then you're going to want to hit 
add bot on the right hand side. Once you do that, you're going to see a wild bot appeared and it has been created. You can change the icon if you'd like. Be sure to turn the public bot off unless you want it to be public. Um, anyone can access this bot unless you turn this public bot icon off. So now, once you do that, do that, you want to make sure that you copy this key and paste it somewhere into a text file. This is very important. If anyone gets access to your key, they can run your bot on their server. Um, it's basically the permissions access that, that is given when you try to program your bot. So copy that, put it somewhere safe, but you can always come back here if you need to copy your token. Just make sure not to give it to anybody. And we're actually going to create a environment later on to show you how to hide this key from your main code. So now what you're going to want to do is click on auth or OAuth2 on the left hand side and click URL generator to invite your bot to your server. Select bot and application commands once you're in the URL generator. You're going to want to check mark these. These are the only two you're going to want to check mark. Once you have those check mark, scroll down a little bit more and you're going to see a copy button. And you're going to want to select all the permissions to be able to give your bot access to different functions in the channel. So to make it easy, put administrator, gives them everything, but just got to be careful with that. If you give administrator permissions, you have to make sure your key is protected. So if you want to just do send messages for this example, that may be ideal. So once you got all this set up, hit the copy button, and paste it into your web browser. Just like so. Once it's in there, hit enter and authorize the bot to connect to your server. Once you do that, it's going to say authorized. You may now close this window or tab. And I would just make sure we go over to Discord and make sure the bot is actually there before we start beginning coding. And in our case, it is. We've done everything right so far. Let's keep going. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is install the PyCord module in PyCharm. To do this, you'll go to PyCharm and select the terminal near the bottom of the screen. It'll be just right here on the bottom left-ish hand side. Click Terminal. It's going to open this up, It'll look just like this, and this is where we will type our first command. Type the following text into the terminal. pip space install space minus sign greater than u space pi dash cord. Once you do this, it's going to start collecting PyCord. Um, mine says requirement already satisfied because I already had it installed. But again, in your case, it may be a little different. This is what installs the PyCord package, which is what we're going to be working with to uh, basically give our bot commands through Discord. Once you have PyCord installed, now we can begin coding our bot. And the documentation to PyCord is also in the description for any of those developers or programmers that may have experience already. Now, this is where it gets uh, gets a little protective. Before we code, let me show you how to hide your bot's token that we went and got earlier. So the first thing you're going to want to do, we already have our main.py file that was created because we had that welcome script. So now all you got to do, right click Python project, go to new file, and then name your file env.py. This will be where we store our API key or our token, bot token key so that it's hidden from the main code. What we're doing is creating a variable for our API key, or in this case, a bot key, bot token, that can be called on without using the actual token itself in the main code. So, once the file is created, make sure you have your token that you received when making the bot earlier, and double click the env.py file to open it, and then type the following code into the text editor. You're gonna put API, underscore key equals space and then within single quotes you'll copy and paste that key we just received. That's how you hide it from your main file. Now your API key can be used without using the key itself. Anytime you need to reference the API key in your main code simply type API underscore key and that will reference this function that you just created, or this variable, I'm sorry, that you just created. So what this is, it's a variable. API underscore key equals your code or your key. That is a variable that you just created that you can now call on in your main file. 
now that we have our key hidden, we have PyCharm, Python installed, interpreter set up, everything ready to go, bots in the server, now we can start to code our bot. Line one, import Discord. This imports the Discord module if you're not using PyCord and allows us to work with the Discord API for coding our bot. Since we've already installed PyCore, this likely won't be used. Let's keep going. Number two, imports OS. This allows us to call upon our locally stored API key in an environment file if we decided to go that route. Line four, from discord.ext, import commands. This line allows us to import the commands extension from the Discord module. Line six, bot equals commands dot capital B OT with parentheses command underscore prefix equals within quotes a greater than sign. Basically, it's saying the bot equals this commands import that we just put right here, commands dot bot. This is this is a uh, reference from discord.ext and then the command underscore prefix, another variable, equals greater than sign. Now this can be changed. If you want to change it to exclamation point, period, you can do that. This is just registering the prefix that's going to be used to call upon our bot. Next, we're going to do line nine. It's, this is called a decorator. It's going to be at bot dot command with parentheses. This is a decorator letting Python know we want to run a bot dot command using the Discord extension that we imported earlier in the code. Line 10, we're going to put async def ping with ctx in parentheses with a colon after it. This line of code asynchronously, that's what async means, defines the command ping as itself being the context. Context equals context. So in the parentheses, ctx equals the context. So it's defining ping whenever the ping context comes up to this bot. And this colon is there because we're going to tell it what to do if this context is received in the Discord chat. At which point we would put our next line of code, line 11, which this is the, the, the line that tells the bot what to do if ping is entered into the chat. Now, whenever you're creating a function like this, async def ping, whenever you have a colon and you need to create another line of code, it's always going to be indented in Python. It's just formatting. Formatting is very important. So in this line, we're going to put await context.send, and then we're basically telling in the parentheses what we want the bot to send back to the chat if it's ever receiving that ping context that we said earlier. So basically, whenever the word or the context ping is passed into the server, the bot is awaiting this context so it can reply with the phrase pong. Hopefully that makes sense. Line 13 is bot.run, and then this is where that variable that we created earlier, earlier with the hidden key, bot.run, and then in the parentheses put API underscore key without the quotes, just API underscore key by itself. The quotes may work, you may be able to use both, but uh, this is the second to final line which runs the bot using our API key hidden variable we created earlier. And then last but not least, if, you're, if you did this locally, or if you did this with PyCharm, I, I did both methods to, to help both uh, aspects. But if you did it from PyCharm, then you'll have to put from env, because remember that file we created earlier was .env, or env.py, from env import api underscore key. What's that saying is from that, that env file we created earlier, we want to import that api key variable so we can reference it in this main code. So now, since we've imported this, now this line of code here, bot.run parentheses API underscore key, it knows what we're talking about when we're saying API underscore key. So now, what do we do next? We right click your main.py file and select run. The console will open at the bottom and let you know if there's any errors. There should not be any. You should see something like this with the path to your uh, Python exe file and the path to your main Python file that you're working on. Now head over to the Discord and test it out. But again, if you haven't already, make sure your bot has the appropriate roles to, for access to your server to be able to send messages in the channel you want to test it out. 
and then we go to any channel where the bot can uh, send messages and simply type greater than ping and there you go the practice bot we named replied with pong it's it's that easy pretty cool right now you've created added and coded your discord bot to receive a greater than ping command and uh, yeet of course it gets a lot more complicated but that's just the basics hope it made sense